Hey friends, Kevin here. And while I happen to be in the bigger van tonight, and this has been my longest trip so far that I'm in the middle of, I've been thinking a lot about the minivan. And I've really had time to go over in my head a lot of the pros and cons. So today we're going to talk about the seven reasons that a minivan may be the best vehicle for you and those pros. So let's get to it. Okay, number one, why you want a minivan? Gas mileage. My old gold minivan that you see in those videos running across the country and across all types of elevations gets about 20 miles a gallon. Behemoth here, which is a Class B, basically converted cargo van, full-size van, will get 15 if everything lines up in the universe correctly. But that's not usually what's going to happen. That's not usually where I'm going to be. I'm going to be bouncing down back roads and and out exploring, and when I'm doing that, I am in about the 12 range, and I think that's pretty normal for one of these, and it can drop below that. I have gotten as low as nine, but even the difference between 20 and 12 or 13, I figured this up on a coast-to-coast -coast trip before, and doing coast-to-coast -coast big loop that I did was about $700 in the minivan. If I take this larger van, any kind of cargo van, full-size van, on the same trip, it's going to be eleven dollars or $1,200 in gas for the same exact trip. So that does put a dent in the budget unless you can find some ways to offset that extra extra money you're spending. Number two, a minivan is made for soccer moms. A minivan is made and designed to drive like a car. A cargo van is built on an old truck frame and it is designed to drive like a wore out ice cream truck sliding all over the road. The wind hits it, it's like skiing because it's so tall it just it just causes causes more more issues and you really have to pay attention to driving and you guys know this if you've driven big full-size Fords or Chevys or Dodge Ram trucks or whatever in the past you don't have a lot of a lot of leeway if that thing you let it drop off the road it's it's a whole different ball game than driving a car which means driving a minivan. So I hear a lot of people say, oh, it's, you know, it's almost the same. It is, it is not. It is not even close to being the same. Which brings us to number three. The minivan is easy to park. And you would not think that there was that much of a difference, at least on the trip I've been on so far, between driving a minivan and driving this full-size cargo van. But as I run around, especially when I've gone into downtown areas, and we're not talking major cities, we're talking small towns. I've hit weird streets and alleyways. A couple of times I've been in areas where I've wanted to run by their, their local library, and I've pulled this thing in, and it's like, oh, God. And I've had to squeeze it between other vehicles and circle the block two times, and it's just... Those are the things when I run into this that instantly it goes through my head, <laughs> I wish I had the minivan today. So parking that minivan is really easy. And this giant 19 foot cargo van, there are people that talk about how easy it is to drive and how easy it is to park. And that this thing is designed to fit in one parking place. I can tell you most of the time, here's what is, happens with the bigger van. I either take up 
two parking spaces and park in the middle of them so I don't get jammed in because I have to have so much room to swing in order to pull out. Or I'm trying to run this thing up the front end in off the lot and in the grass and stuff to get the back end out of the way so other people can drive by me. The minivan, none of this is a problem because the minivan is about the size of a large family sedan again, or an SUV. It's not that hard to pull into a single parking place anywhere that you go to. Number four. It is easy to be stealthy, which is what you want sometimes, depending on where you are and where you're parking. It is easier to be stealthy in that minivan and just blend in except for the tags that are on it if somebody looks at it to know what state you're from if you're just running a minivan setup like i have nobody's going to know nobody's going to know from the side looking at it looking at it across a parking lot with a bunch of vehicles nobody's going to know it's anything other than just a common little minivan that there are dozens of probably in that parking lot when you're in a big white cargo van or one of these converted things and you have solar panels on top, even though you do your best to hide those, but you know, you have a stink pipe coming out because you have a toilet, you're not stealthy anymore. And you know, you have running boards and you have big stripes going down the side of this thing telling you what it is and who made it and all the extra windows and it's obvious that this is some type of big conversion van slash RV. You are not going to be stealthy in this thing. People know what you are, what you have, what you're doing. Even if you don't have bike racks and, and carriers and other things hanging off of it, it's still pretty obvious what it is. The minivan, you can kind of hide out, and if you don't have, you know, surfboards on top and bike racks hanging off the back of it. Nobody knows that it's just not another minivan. Number five, a minivan, anyone basically can repair it. When you get into a larger cargo van, anything other than the front end and the drivetrain, the transmission, the engine, you're going to have to take this thing someplace custom. And like this thing, it weighs 6,000 pounds, 7,000 pounds with the tanks full. If I have to have this thing racked, I've had some small garages put it on racks to do minor things, and I am holding my breath watching this thing go up on a rack that either the mechanic doesn't get distracted and cram the top of it into the ceiling, or that it's wavering and I'm just expecting it to tip over and fall off somehow. With the minivan, it's no problem. You know, it's no problem to change tires on that compared to this. It's no problem to take it anywhere and have it put on a lift to have something done to it or something inspected. But once you move into that full-size cargo van, you're playing in a little bit different league. And... That brings us kind of the next one, which is your repairs are going to be cheaper on a minivan. And we're talking basic things like suspension parts and basic starters and alternators and things. When you move into those bigger vans, you move into these bigger engines, you move into these heavier duty suspension parts, it's going to be more expensive for any part you have to buy for it. So that is a nice thing for the minivan. If you're buying a common minivan brand, you know, especially the Chryslers and, and Chevrolets like I have and different things, it's just, you know, parts are cheap and they're abundant. Number seven. This is the worst case scenario, but something I think about constantly when I'm out here is, what happens in the worst case scenario? What happens if I have an accident that totals it? What happens if I have a major repair 
lose a transmission. The minivan was the first thing I got, and I got it for a reason. And that reason was it was cheap. And I knew on a long trip, if I was 1,500 miles from home, about the worst thing that was going to happen was I was going to have a transmission go out. And if that happened, rather than be stuck with a multi-thousand dollar repair and the downtime, which can turn into weeks if you are far from home and you are at the mercy of whichever transmission shop you just happen to be nearest, my plan B or plan A, I guess I should say, with that minivan was to junk it. Wherever I was at, go to the nearest place I could find another one in decent shape, throw my stuff in it, and take off down the highway again. With this monster cargo van and everything that's in it, that is not going to be an option. One, because of the amount of stuff you're carrying, and two, because you probably have much more money in something like this which means you're going to have to have it repaired, which means you are now a slave to wherever you can find a mechanic. If you have anything else that you can think of, differences, I'd love for you to put that down in the comments. More pros of the minivan. I'm going to do some other videos soon. I'm going to get into some of the negatives, some of the pros of this thing compared to a minivan. We're going to do a lot of comparison things like that. And eventually at the end of this trip, I'm going to have both of these vans side by side so we can really do some size comparisons and some walkthroughs and show you the exact differences in what my daily routine is, my morning routine and evening routine in the minivan and what it is in this to give you an idea of which one may be better for you. This will hopefully give you some things to think about and ponder about Maybe something you, an angle you hadn't thought about before. So we'll leave it at that for now, and we'll see you next time.